Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, we're going to start the process of creating a stitched mandala. Now, I use just stitches for each of the concentric circles. If you want to make a fabric collage and then add your stitches to that collage, we'll go right ahead. And really, feel free to alter this project as you like. If you want to incorporate buttons or beads or anything like that. If you want to vary the stitches that I show or omit some altogether, go right ahead. And if you want to alter the size of your piece, you want to make a giant mandala or just a small simple one, by all means, I encourage you to do that. In today's video, I'm going to show you the process of building that mandala and the steps I use to start it. I like to create my outermost piece first, my largest circle, and then my smallest one. And from there, I jump around creating that mandala. I keep dividing it in smaller parts. Some people like to work from the outside in or the inside out. For me, that doesn't really work, mainly because the purpose of this project is for me to enjoy the experience. I also don't have something in mind necessarily when I start. I choose my colors, and I know I want to use those colors. I know I want to use circles, but that's about it. I don't choose my stitches ahead of time. If you would like to do that, and that's your process, by all means, go right ahead. In today's video, we're going to create the fern stitch for our outer circle and a lazy daisy flower for the center point. In the next video, well, we'll create a bunch of stitches. We'll create the chain stitch, the cable stitch, back stitch, straight stitch, running stitch, French knots, and we fill in our piece, and I'll show you how I do that. But in today's video, we're just going to start with the largest circle and the smallest focal point. So let's get started. So here's the stitched mandala that we'll be making. We'll do a little variation on this, but it's the premise of everything is just stitches. If you want to incorporate additional fabric to make a collage background, go right ahead. So choose five or six colors of embroidery floss. And here I've used kind of pastels and, and springy colors. Here I'm going with more of an autumn theme. So my colors are a little more vibrant, a little muted, but a little more vibrant. This is like wine, whereas this is lemonade, just to give you an idea of how I look at it. You also need a piece of quilted fabric. You could use fabric through an embroidery hoop. That's just regular fabric. It doesn't have to be quilted. Or you can just use what I'm using today in class, which is just some batting and additional fabric on top. Now, I like the cleanness of the white fabric, but you don't have to use white. You can use whatever you want. With this one, this was just a piece of quilted fabric. It was a little bit off-white, so you can tell the difference. But either way, it just makes it so that it stands out. All the stitches really stand out against that background. You'll also need a removable marker here just to plot your circle because you can make it wonky, but the purpose of the mandala is to try and look a little more precise and concentric with all the circles that we'll be stitching. So to do this, I'd like to start by sketching out my largest circle and my smallest circle first. My batting really dictates the size here. This is about six and a half inch square piece of batting. So I want my outer circle to be oh, four or five inches. My templates, my largest template that I have here is three and a half inches. So I need something larger. And I went through some dishes and whatnot and I found the cap here to my little candy jar. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball that in the center and then just trace around that. Now again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but the more perfect you make it, the neater it will look overall. And that includes stitches as well as your tracings. So now I have my circle here, I can measure it. It's four and a half inches and that's a good size for me. So I want to find the center point because that will help me create fairly even spaces from the center out. So for four and a half inches here, I'll have to go two and a quarter. So I'll make a mark here at the two and a quarter inch and I'll turn my piece to the side and do the same thing just a couple of times. And kind of where this intersects is where I'm going to have my center point. Just choose this in a few spots. So this was to keep going. So about here, that's my center point. And that's two and a quarter. Yep. So that's a good center. So I have my exterior circle, and then I want a circle in the center. So again, from that center point, 
I'll just measure out, oh, maybe a quarter inch to either side of it. Now I'm sure there's a more precise way that you could do this. This is the method that I use. And again, it's not exactly precise, but it's pretty close. And now I just traced a little diamond shape here, connecting all my dots. Now I can start using my template. I'll come down with one of the smaller circles, and that will be the center point. I can either make it right on those dots or just a little bit larger. And that's what I'll do. This is a 5 8 inch circle. So now I'll just trace that around. So now I have my center circle and my most outer one. Today we're going to stitch the most outer one. So I'm going to just go around it and I just like to make a few little marks just eyeballing the width that I want to make my stitches. We're going to use the fern stitch. So I like to just kind of have an idea of how wide I want to make it. And this gives me just a little way to try and make it a little more exact. You could measure this as well. And now I'll need to just do a circle just on the outside as well. So now I'm ready to make my stitching. I chose to use three strands of embroidery floss. You can use as many or as few as you like. And I'm going to start with my outermost circle with this color. This is 347 from DMC. It's like a, uh, almost like a deep watermelon red. It's kind of beautiful. It goes with these colors very nicely. So I just want to take my work, I can start anywhere, and I'm going to start right on that line that I drew for that circle. And I'm just going to pull my stitch through and come down here to one point. And then I'm going to come out to those lines we made, the outer circle, and come right back to that point. And then I'll come up on the inner circle, approximately the same height as that line heading towards the center point and come back down here. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll continue with my stitch, the same length as the first one, up to my center point. And then I'll bring the remaining stitches out from the end and back in, and then towards the center circle and back in. And you can make these as close or as far apart as you like. And as you can see, the contrast is really starting to show up already with the colors of the fabric and the colors of the embroidery floss. So I'll just continue this all the way around. Now this is the circle that uses the most thread just because it's the largest circle. So I'll have to re-thread my needle. I don't want to use so much thread that I get snarls and tangles. I'll continue stitching all the way around and then we'll stitch the center, one of these circles. I like to repeat this color thread two or three times, maybe even four, depending on the way the mandala develops. So I'll continue stitching all the way around with this fern stitch and show you how it looks. So I've finished stitching that fern stitch all the way around and it reminds me of a baseball, the stitching on a baseball, but that's only because of the colors I use currently. It will all work out when it's all done. Now I want to stitch the center here. You can jump around and stitch however you want, but I'm going to jump right ahead and stitch the center. And I want to stitch a lazy daisy flower. You can choose the number of petals, four or five. I'm going to choose five. So I want my petals to kind of have a nice spacing to them. So I kind of just sketch out my little dots. And I know I want to leave the center open so that I can put in another color thread. I like to alternate the thread colors throughout my piece. And this is just one way of starting a kind of a circle here with the same color and yet allowing there to be an opening to add a little bit of embellishment. So for my Lazy Daisy stitch, I'm going to come up just off the center here. And then I come down here right next to it and I go up on one of those points. And that's one of my flower petals. 
and then I just stitch it down. And then I move to the next one and I do all five in the same way. I come up here, turn my fabric around, stitch down and come up on that point. And then I tack that petal down. And I continue this all the way around. Again, I'm leaving that center open so that I can put maybe a French knot. And I'm using all six strands of embroidery floss this time because I wanted it to be a little thicker, the petals. Again, that's up to you how many strands of floss you want to use. Normally, I'll use fewer strands as I get to the center of my mandala. But for this technique, for this flower, I wanted to use all six. Come out. So I have five petals for my center here. I'll knot off the thread on the back of my piece here. And now I'm ready next time to start additional layers in the mandala. And for the next few layers, I'll switch to a different color and a different stitch. So that's how I start my stitched mandala. It's a beautiful piece and the colors you choose, the size you make it, the stitches you use, well these all come into play. Now my stitches are not all perfect and that's okay. It's okay with me so that makes it okay. If you're somebody who likes precision just take out any stitches that are a little wonky or don't work perfectly. I kind of appreciate and like the hand stitched look. I know many and stitchers make perfection. Unfortunately, I'm not one of them. I like the little nuances that come with making an error here and there. But if that's not your style, then don't adopt it. Make it the way you want. In the next video, I'll show you the process for creating the circles that fill in the mandala. I jump around, making different sized circles, and it's a really interesting process. I hope you can take something away from this. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you for part two.